Howdy howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In our last video we talked about how to overload operators, and we did that for two reasons. One, to make sure that addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division works just like it does with fractions as we're used to it doing with integers or doubles. And the second is in order to be able to just print out a fraction using the insertion operator. Now we overloaded this insertion operator and that's great if my output stream happens to be console output, but it also works if I wanted to print out to a file. So what's nice about this is that this really does double duty where I can print out stuff to a file as well as print out stuff to a um, to an output stream, a uh, console output stream. What I want to do today is I want to take care of a couple of things. Number one is we have one constructor which requires two parameters. And I want to add some other constructors here. I would really like to have a constructor which has just one parameter. So let's say the numerator. And in that situation, we would be able to make that fraction by putting it over 1. So if I pass it the parameter 4, then I know that that fraction really should be 4 over 1. And I want to do another constructor that's kind of like a default constructor. And for this default constructor, my fraction should be 0 over 1. And then I want to do one other constructor, but this one's going to have a value given to it. So in other words, if I receive a double form of a value, I should be able to find some way to convert it to a fraction. So it'd be really nice if I typed in pi and it gave me 22 over 7 or 355 over 113. Some fraction that's very, very close, close enough within some tolerance to what we expect the value of pi to be. And the other thing I want to do is I want to deal with this helper function because when we ran our program, let me go ahead and run it real quick. Uh, so that was fraction main.cpp with an output of fraction main.exe. And then I run fraction main. Notice that we end up with fractions that are not reduced. We had 36 over 27, we had 18 over 18. So I'd really like it if I had some way to make sure that fractions were reduced. In order to do that, we're going to need two functions to be written here. One is going to be some function that determines the greatest common divisor for two ints A and B. And that would be an accessor method, so its return type is going to be int. The other thing is just something that tells a fraction to reduce itself. So that would be a void reduce. And of course, in order to reduce a fraction, I just tell the fraction to reduce itself. I don't need to give it any information. What's going to happen is this reduce method is actually going to call on GCD. And maybe I actually want to take this and put it up here in the public section so that our client could tell a fraction to reduce, even though we'll show later that's not going to be necessary. So that's what we're doing. All of this is stuff that I've changed in my header file because all of these are prototypes to functions we're going to write today. So if I want to actually write those functions, I want to jump over to my fraction.cpp. And in the top part when I was doing these constructors, this is where I want to write my second constructor. Remember in the scope of fraction, it's going to be a fraction constructor with just a numerator. And so in this situation, I want to say that my numerator is going to be equal to num. And I can make any fraction have a denominator of 1. So this is my overloaded constructor. This is a constructor with only one parameter in it. And so I'm telling it to, whenever I receive just one value, that value is the numerator, the denominator should be 1. I want to do something similar with our default constructor, so fraction, scope fraction, with no parameters in it. And in this case, if I don't get any information, I want to make the simplest fraction I can. So we've talked about how our denominator being 1 would be fairly simple. But also, if our numerator was equal to 0, that way, whatever fraction we create, when I add or subtract it to another function fraction, it shouldn't really change it that much. Of course, multiplying and dividing may cause issues later, but we're okay with that. So these are my three overloaded constructors here. I've got my fraction constructor with two parameters, my fraction constructor with one parameter, my fraction constructor with zero parameters, and those are pretty straightforward. What's not going to be as straightforward is this fourth constructor that we said we were going to write. So in the fraction scope fraction, where I'm past a double, which I'm calling 
value. So if I want to figure out the double value, let's say I've got some number like 4.31. So the first thing I'm going to say is, hey, that's equal to 4.31 divided by 1. That clearly makes a fraction, but it doesn't have an integer numerator, and that's kind of the tweak here. So what I want to do is I want to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 10. So 4.31, excuse me, 43.1 divided by 10. That's also a fraction, but it also has the problem of no integer in the numerator. So if we do it once more, we're going to do 431 divided by 100. And then I can reduce it as necessary. So this is really what I'm looking for. This type of algorithm is what I'm looking for for this fraction method. So I'm going to need some type of integer. So I'm going to say int num is going to be equal to, and I'm going to go ahead and cast as an int value. And I'm going to say my denominator is starting off as 1. So what I'm essentially doing is I'm saying, hey, I'm going to make this fraction the integer part of my value divided by 1. And if that's not equal to this decimal, not within some certain parameter, then I need to reevaluate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say while the absolute value of value minus num is greater than some threshold, 0 0.0000001, for example. And I'm choosing that because I noticed here when we ran this program that just outputting the way that C++ standardly outputs it using console output gives me six decimal places. So if it's not visually different within six decimal places, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty close to my answer. So while this is not true, I need to do the following. I need to multiply my value by 10. I need to redetermine my numerator by casting it as an integer. And I need to reevaluate my denominator by multiplying it by 10. So this is that same algorithm that we had up here. I had 4.31 divided by 1. So I multiplied top and bottom by 10. And as long as this decimal place, this value minus num, is going to be greater than 0 0.000001, as long as this decimal place is more than an insignificant amount, I need to keep doing it. And notice when I multiplied by 10 here, now everything that follows that decimal place is a zero. So that's the algorithm that I've got here. And my iteration is actually where I'm incrementing my value times 10. So now I want to assign numer gets num and denom gets den. And so that should do it. So let's compile this. Actually, let's change our main so that we can actually test some of these fractions. So I'm going to say fraction f7 with one parameter, let's say 8. Fraction F8 with some parameter, let's say, actually no parameter. I want to test the no parameter version. And fraction F9, which is going to have some double value. Let's say 3.1415. That's kind of a pi number. So if I was to see out F7 and see out F8 and see out F9, I'm interested in seeing what I get out of this. So I'm going to compile and run, and so I see a couple of things here. First, I see that 8 over 1, which seems to work fairly well. I see this and this 1 is not working the way I'm expecting it to, and so I'm probably going to have to do something to fix that. That's our default constructor, and for some reason it's not printing out the fraction correctly. And then I've got my double, and notice what happened with my double parameter. It figured out, oh, it's going to have to multiply by 10 four times. So it multiplied the denominator by 10 four times, and I have this fraction. And by the way, I chose this particular version of pi because I knew that this would reduce. So I'm interested about this f8 situation. So let me go back here. I want to print out f8.getNumer, and I want to divide, and the, excuse me, I want to sit, hit the vinculum, and then the f8.getDenom, because I want to make sure I'm actually getting 
those values. So I'm going to recompile. Hmm. It says request for a member get numer in F8, which is of non class type fraction. And that means that it's going to have problems with this default constructor. This default constructor is not working the way I'm expecting it to. So I may have to do that idea of creating a new fraction object just because it's a default constructor. And it has a problem with that. I need to make sure that it is a pointer. And that means I'm going to have to dereference these F8s. And I believe with, with uh, the order of operations, I actually need to dereference the object first and then access the methods. Let's see if that works. That seemed to work. And now I get that 0 over 1. So the thing is, when we're dealing with a fraction using this default constructor, we're going to have to be very careful in working it the way that we're expecting it to. So this is going to be have to how, how we take care of these default situations. All right, so the last thing that I want to take care of in today's video is I want to take care of this reducing idea because this fraction is definitely not reduced. These fractions here are definitely not reduced, and this fraction is definitely not reduced. So I want to make sure that I can reduce fractions correctly. So I'm actually going to scroll down to the bottom past all of these overloaded operators, and there's two things that I want. First, I need a GCD method, and it's got to return an int and it belongs to the GCD class. And I'm going to have two parameters, int A and int B. Now, the way that we're going to do GCD here is we're going to do a recursive version. It's going to be very short. So I'm going to say if B is equal to 0, then I want to return A. Otherwise, I want to return the GCD of B and A mod B. Now, what I'm doing here is actually twofold. So let's say, for example, I wanted to find the GCD of 24 and 54. The first time that I do this, I'm passing 24 and 54. 54 is not 0, so we jump down here. It's going to put a 54 here, and it's going to do 24 mod 54, which is 24. So notice the very first thing that it does is it makes sure that my bigger number comes first. Then once I do that, it's going to go through this calculation again. Now, B is 24. It's not 0. So we jump down here. So now we're dealing with 24 and the value that I get when I take 54 and find its remainder when I divide by 24. Well, I know that 24 times 2 is 48, and 54 minus 48 is 6. So now we're dealing with 24 and 6. Now I'm going to do this again, and my second number, 6, is not 0. So I'm going to pass it 6, and when I find 24 mod 6, I actually get 0. So this is very similar to the Euclidean algorithm that we used back in our C++, I mean, back in our Java class, back in our C-sharp class. So it's a very concise way to write it, and it actually doesn't take that much of the stack when we're running a recursive algorithm here. So this determines our GCD. And then to reduce, fraction, colon, colon, reduce, all we're going to do is we're going to say our GCD is equal to the GCD for our numerator and our denominator. And I'm going to say that numerator is going to get divided by the GCD. And I'm going to say the denominator is going to be divided by the GCD. Now one point that I want to make is that I had to call this variable something different than the function name. The function name has a very specific location in memory, and I don't want to confuse the location of the variable with the location of the function in memory. So I have to have these as two separate distinct names. So the last thing that I want to do to get this to work is I want to go back up to my constructor for fraction, and I want to tell it to reduce itself. 
and I want to do the same thing in this overloaded double. I want to tell the fraction to reduce itself. I am not going to do it here because 0 over 1 for all practical purposes is reduced. And similarly, if I was to have 4 over 1 or 8 over 1 or 22 over 1, that would be reduced as well. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll compile one last time and run it. And notice now these fractions are reduced. Instead of having 36 over 27, I've got 4 over 3. Instead of having 18 over 18, I've got 1 over 1. And instead of having 3, 1, 4, 1, 5 over 10,000, I've got 6,283 over 2,000. So it's reducing all of these fractions for me. Now, as the year goes on, we're going to be dealing with this fraction class more and more. So you're going to need to make sure you keep this fraction class in a safe place, because we're going to be using it for a lot of things in here. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.